thank and praise God for you today. If you will, turn in your Bible to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 31. And we're going to look at one verse today, verse number 6. Deuteronomy, chapter number 31. And we're going to look at verse number 6. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank you for joining us today for Day of Deliverance. And you will see information on your screen. We ask that you will take advantage of that. Give us a call, contact us, and we would love to correspond with you. Welcome to Day of Deliverance. Deuteronomy chapter number 31, verse number 6. As you're standing, read with me. Read. Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Go to God. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word on today. We thank God for you today. He is starting out in the scripture passage as Moses is giving his farewell address. Moses is speaking to the children of Israel just before they go over into the promised land. Now Moses' farewell address meaning that he knew he was getting close to the time that he was going to die. And he was speaking to them and he went over the history of their time from coming out of Egypt all the way while they were in the wilderness. And he talked about how that God had given his law to them and how that God wanted them to live once they got over into the promised land. Moses was letting them know that, look, I know I'm not going to get in over there with you, but I just want to let you know that I have seen the promised land. Yes. And this is what God wants to do when you get there. It is a place flowing with milk and honey. Yes. It is a place of prosperity. It is a place where God will bless you and bring all kinds of goodness into your life. Everything that you desire, you will find it in the promised land. It is the ideal life. But understand this, when you get there, you're going to find some giants. Yes. As you are entering in, you're going to find some discomfort. As you are entering in, you're going to see some things that might cause you to become afraid or things that you will see that will cause you to feel fearful and have some anxiety. That's the way it is when God blesses us today. Whenever you are about to come into that place of prosperity, whenever you are about to come into that place where God will have you healed and where God will have you strengthened and where God will work incredible things in your life, when, when, when God will bless you to the point to where you know that the, the enemy is feeling threatened by you because the spirit of the Lord is upon you. And you coming in there, not, not that you will come in there to, 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 to take down, but you come there to take over. Amen. And so when God puts prosperity in your path, when God puts a promise of his love and his care for you in your path, he expects you to go on in there. Amen. But understand this, you are going to see some things that might cause you to feel discouraged. I don't know about you, but I have come into places and times in my life where I know that I'm about to receive a promise from God. Yes. I, I have prayed for certain things and, and God has had given me uh, the understanding that I'm going to get my breakthrough. It may not come as I think it will. How, how many of you realize that sometimes that God will bring you his promise or his breakthrough or his blessing, but it comes in a package that you probably didn't expect? <laughs> uh, have you ever uh, had somebody to give you a gift and it didn't look like much on the outside but once you open the box up and once you open the package up and you look on the inside the thing that's on the inside gives you so much joy you forgot what the package looked like amen we'll discard the package and we'll get whatever is inside I want you to understand today that that's what God's blessing is like. Whatever God has promised to you, maybe he's promised you healing. Maybe he's promised you a husband. Maybe he's promised you a wife. Maybe he's promised you a home. Maybe he's promised you whatever it might be. You know, that very thing that you're looking for. Maybe it's that promotion uh, on the job. Maybe it's a new job. 
uh, whatever God has promised to you and you know that it is a promise from the Lord and you stand on that promise, God is going to do that thing in your life. But the enemy can see that you're about to step into your prosperity. The enemy can see that you're about to step into your breakthrough. So therefore, he will begin to put some things in your path that will cause you to feel like I can't get that. I, 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 I don't know, you know, that, that, that thing is too big for me. That, 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 that promotion might be too much for me. Uh, may, maybe that raise is going to be too much for me. Uh, maybe uh, if, if I buy this property, uh, by the time I get this property, uh, I may not be able to pay for it. Uh, all kinds of ideas and all kinds of thoughts come into your mind. How many of you ever had the little voices to come to your mind and, and tell you uh, you're going to fail? Uh, you, you're going to fall apart. Uh, this is a disaster. Uh, this is not the good thing. This is, uh, you know, th that this thing is going to hurt you in some way or another. You start hearing those little voices coming to you saying that uh, you're not going to make it. Uh, this thing can kill you. Uh, it, it ain't what it, it looks like. It's not what you thought it was going to be. And just because it comes in a package that you did not expect, don't think that it's not what God wanted you to have. Amen. Now, he gets down to where we see it in verse 6, where he says that there are going to be some people in the land that you're going to. They are bigger than you. They are stronger than you. They are uglier than you. <laughs> The, these people uh, have already been established there, but I don't want them there now. I kept them there long enough for them to keep the grounds. I kept them there long enough for them to hold on to this place to, to make it good by the time you get there. Because when you get there, you're going to have houses that you didn't build. You're going to have fields that you didn't plant. You're going to have animals that, they, that you didn't have to go out and, 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 and get them for yourself. You, you didn't have to raise them yourself. They're already there. So God is about to bring them into the land of already there. And, and, and so they won't have to work as hard because the enemy and the, and, the, and the heathen has already gotten it. And they're holding on to it until you get there. You better know today that somebody is holding on to your money. Somebody is holding on to something that belongs to you. And it's time for the devil to lose that thing. It's time for the devil to lose your money. It's time for the devil to lose your prosperity. It's time for the devil to lose your body uh, from, from uh, disease. And glory to God because God is about to do something in your life. You're, you're about to step into your promised land. Somebody ought to say amen today. Be strong and of a good courage. Now, why would he say be strong and of a good courage? Sounds like to me that he's giving them a command. He's letting them know that, listen, I know what you feel like. I know what the thing looks like to you, but I am declaring to you. But see, God has to speak this out first. God has to say it, and he spoke it out through the voice of Moses, and he said, now you go, but be strong and be of good courage. That sounds like a command. So he's letting them know, listen, the strength that you have is not your strength. Amen. The courage that you have did not come up out of you, but it comes from God himself. Yes. So what he's really saying is that now is your time to know how to lean on the Lord. Now is your time to know how to depend on and rely on the Lord. Yes. Because see, in your own strength, you don't have any. It, 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 in, your own, in your own intelligence, you don't have enough intelligence, you don't have enough sense uh, to go and obtain this thing. So you're going to have to have the Lord with you in order for you to step over into this big venture that you're about to take. Amen. Glory to God. Somebody I, I was working with on last week uh, is about to start their third business. And, and, and I was uh, working with them to, to help, try to help them to launch their new business. And uh, it's a young lady, and, and she's an entrepreneur, and so she just 
you know, she, she was telling me about some of the hindrances that came up in her way and things that people are doing to try to stop her from having what she knows belonged to her. And it was like that in her other two businesses. And there was pressure against her, but she pushed on and she trusted in the Lord. And, and God caused those two businesses to be successful. But then he put it on her heart that this other one, you're going to have to start this one too. And so she's launching it from the ground up. And I was privileged to be able to work along with her to do my part to help her to market her business. Amen. And, and so as we were working, uh, she was letting me know, listen, I, I've got this going on. I'm trying to take care of my ailing mother and I'm trying to take care of some things at, at home. And then some of the people are not cooperating with me. And, and oh, yeah, she was going on with all of that. But she's not letting any of that stop her because she has faith in the Lord. If God did it before, he's going to do it again. And so even though the devil will put all these obstacles in the way, she's hearing the word from the Lord, which says, fear not. <laughs> Come on now. Saying, fear not, nor be afraid of them. Now, when he's saying, fear not, nor be afraid of them, this also is a command. Now, he didn't say, you're not going to feel fear. Now, we, we got to get this thing really, really clear because when we're about to take a journey, when we're about to go into a new thing, when we're about to step into our blessing or into that place of prosperity or that place of wealth, we're about to step into something that we've never seen before. We're about to go into the unknown and oftentimes what people have inside is an emotion which is called the fear or the dread of the unknown. And so there's a feeling that comes on you that makes you want to quit before you ever get started. Because when you don't know how it's going to be, when you don't feel like you're in control of all of this, you get that feeling that comes over you like, should I do this? Uh, maybe, maybe that's not the Lord. Maybe I, I, I need to back up and, 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 and do something that I'm more comfortable with. But see, whenever God is elevating you, he's taking you out of your comfort zone and he's placing you in a place where you've never been before so that you will have to depend on him. Notice here he says, fear not. Now this word fear has many depths to it because there is a good fear and then there's a bad fear. The bad fear is called a phobia, which means that you can be afraid of something that cannot hurt you. And then there is another type of fear, which is a reverential fear. That means that you, you will respect whatever is around you, whatever that thing may be. If you have a fear of God, then you respect God. If you, if you have a fear of snakes, you respect that snake. <laughs> if you have a, 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 a fear of, of stepping out in front of a, a moving truck, then that means you respect that truck. So what is going on here in your, it, when we, we're talking about a reverential type of fear, that really is a, about being cautious. God wants you to be cautious about things. Yeah. He wants you to have wisdom whenever you are moving into anything that you're doing. He wants to give you Amen. wisdom. And that wisdom is called being cautious. Yeah. That you are aware that there is danger and so you need to know how to prepare yourself for the danger. You need to know how to prepare yourself for what could happen. Now, when you are pre preparing yourself, that means you will approach it with caution. Yes. But it doesn't mean that you run away from it. So when you are facing something that you're going to have to face, you will, you will face it with caution. But... There is a type of fear, which is a phobia, which means that it is something that, yes, it's dangerous. Yes, it could cause some, some uh, discomfort or, or whatever. But if God is saying, go for it, he don't want you to be afraid of it. So therefore, he's telling you that you are facing this dangerous thing, this unknown thing, but with caution now how do you take caution 
that means you pray. Amen. That's how you take caution. That, you know, if anybody see that a, 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 a vehicle is coming toward them and, and about to hit them, one of the first things you say is, oh, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's not, if it's something you can't do anything about, you, you start calling on the Lord. Amen. So that's how you, uh, you reverence God. You may, you may not be afraid in the sense that, hey, I, I'm, I'm afraid for my life or I'm, I'm, I'm scared, you know, to the point to where I'm not going to do it. But if I have to face this, I don't want to face it alone. Amen. Do, do you follow what I'm saying? Amen. Whatever this thing is that you might be feeling fearful about, he says, now it's not that I'm telling you not to have that feeling. I'm telling you that you need to face it. And you face it with courage and being strong. Yeah. Now, how do, you, how do you get strong? How do you have the courage? Once again, it all comes supernaturally. Amen. And God is saying that it, do not enter this thing without me. Amen. Do not enter this thing without my presence. Amen. Do not enter this thing because, see, uh, that's, that's what causes fear. Right. Whenever yeah. somebody is about to do something and if they do not, acknowledge the Lord then they're going to feel fearful and they're also going to make some mistakes Amen. if you are not acknowledging God being with you you are going to not only feel fearful but you're going to panic and you're going to do something that you will regret Amen. and that's why he says fear not yes. don't go into this alone Amen. don't don't take this venture without considering the Lord your God. Amen. So that's what he means. You, he's not telling you don't feel anything. You're going to feel something. You can't help it because it's an emotion. And so uh, he gave us emotions for a reason. But not, not to have the dread of a thing. Not to have apprehension or hesitation about the thing that God told you to do. Amen. Come on now. But you will face it with God. That's why he says, for the Lord thy God, he it is that does go with thee. There's no reason for me to be afraid. If I know that God is with me, I have no reason to dread. I have no reason to have apprehension. I have no reason to think I need to turn back. But I got to face this thing, but with God and knowing that God is with me. See, now God is not just with me, but he's also in me, and he's also around me, and he's also going to be for me. And if I recognize that God is already gone before me, that God is already around me, that God is in me, and God is with me, when his spirit is about me and in me, I know that everything's going to be all right no matter how I feel. So... Regardless of how I feel, I got to face it. Amen. Regardless of how I feel, I've got to deal with this. Yes. You get certain bills in the mail. Sometimes I don't like to open certain envelopes. <laughs> <laughs> I know what it is. But the devil tried to put these little voices in your mind and saying, you know, you ain't going to be able to pay this one. God, this was too much for you. Uh, you're going you're to have to... Uh, you're going to have to look at this, and, and, and then uh, they're going to they gonna take this from you. They're going to take that from you. I mean, all of these voices come to your mind. But then when you open it up and say, in the name of Jesus, you know, whatever it is, you're gonna, if, if, it's, if it's a big amount, then you're going to bless me with what I need to take care of it. Because my intention is to handle it. Amen. So if I got to face it, if I got to handle it, I know that God is with me. Amen. So now... I don't do like I used to, you know, when I, I sit the bill or the envelope down on the, on the table somewhere and wait for a few days. <laughs> no, no, I, I say, devil, you're a liar. I'm going to open this up, open it up right now. Open it up, look at it. And then I go, my wife will tell you, I, I'll go right to the computer. I say, I, instead of me sitting there waiting to pay this, I'm going to pay it now. I, I'm, I'm not, I, don't, I don't believe in debt. If I can get, get, go ahead and pay cash for something, go ahead and take care of it. And, ble and believe God is going to take care of everything that comes afterwards. You keep living like that, then 
you will take a day at a time trusting God. And even if that feeling of dread or fear comes over you, you begin to face it with courage. Amen. Face it with the courage that God has given to you. And what is that courage? Once again, knowing, recognizing that God is with me, in me, all about me, and he's gone before me. It says that he it is that does go with thee. He will not, what? Fail. He will not fail. You see, we will fail if we don't trust God. Amen. We will fail if we don't acknowledge God. Amen. We will fail if we are afraid and fearful because being afraid and fearful simply means that I'm not acknowledging God in this. I'm, I'm thinking that I'm go going into this with my own strength and in my own power and my own intelligence. Yes, yes, yes. So that's what fear is. That's, that's what you're going to feel and that's what you're going to uh, operate from any time that you do not acknowledge God with you. But he says, God not only is with you, not only is he going before you, but God says, I want you to know I'm not going to fail you. I'm giving you this word of encouragement today that God will not fail you. Amen. You do not have to be afraid. You do not have to have doubts. You do not have to have apprehension. But you will go into your place of prosperity, into your place of blessing, into that place that God is, is promoting you to because he's taking you to another level. Some people, are, know, they know they're about to go into ministry and they, they, they're just shaking in their boots. <laughs> but that's okay. Because there are all kinds of things that people are afraid of. And when they start shaking in their boots, the Bible says, you know, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Yes. What is he talking about? Once again, knowing that you can't do it yourself. Amen. Knowing that you need God's help in everything that you do. The things that people are afraid of. People are afraid of change. Yes. Do you know that that's one of the things that, that, that just really gets people all bent out of shape? Is because they're afraid of change. And when something comes to you, that, that you have to realize that as long as you are alive, there will always be change taking place. Yes. Amen. As, if, if something is alive, it's always changing. Yes. Whether it's a plant an animal, or whatever it is, if it's alive, something about it is changing Amen. constantly. So we need to be aware that change is inevitable in all of our lives. As long as you're alive, as you get older, something's changing. Amen? Amen. I, I was telling somebody the other day, you know, I look in the mirror, and I have a few more blonde hairs than I did a few months ago. So I, I know I'm changing. I look at some old pictures of mine and I said, hmm, I don't look like I looked back then. Because <laughs> what? Change is happening. So we don't, we don't need to dread change. We just need to know how to make the correct adjustments as we're going along. Well, we, we got to adjust some things. Uh, you know, so, you know many, many of us, you know, we, we, we've had to uh, make some adjustment. We don't have the teeth we used to have many years ago. So they got to make some adjustments. I'm telling you, you got to put some in now. And, uh, some of us don't have the hair. We have to put some on our head, you know, uh, whatever. You know, the change happens. Amen. <laughs> many, many things are going to change. Uh, people that you had in your life five years ago are not in your life anymore. For whatever reason, some have already gone on to their eternal home and they won't be here anymore. So you have to make adjustments. Uh, there, there's change that, that takes place uh, when people move away or when you move away or you have to move into a different uh, location. Change is happening. But whatever is happening, he says, be not afraid because what? God is with you. If it is a, a, any other type of change, did you know that there are some things that people surveyed that, that was done not too long ago? I understand that somebody uh, found out what people fear the most. And 
a lot of us would say it's death. But they say that there is one thing that people fear more than death. And you would probably not even think of it right off. But guess what it is? It's public speaking. <laughs> the, the greatest fear that people have more than they fear death itself is public speaking. Because people don't like to get in front of people knowing that somebody is looking at them and expecting them to say something profound, to say something that's going to change their life. And, and they feel like they're being judged because somebody's looking, uh, well, how, you know, you think about, well, how, how do I look? Or uh, it, it, are my clothes on right? Am I, you know, what, what, what's going on? You know, people are looking at me and, and I got to talk and I got to say something. And I've got to say something that makes sense. Am I presenting correctly? Am I presenting where people can understand me? You know, many times people are performing and they're afraid of the audience. Are they going to clap? Are they going to throw tomatoes at me? You know, voices going through their mind. So public speaking, oftentimes many of us, even like myself, who is an introvert, uh, don't like to do it, but always feel that nervousness before going out before people. But God puts you in this scenario where you have to go out before people. He doesn't put you out there because you feel qualified or because you have, uh, maybe you have taken courses of, in public speaking or any of that. Uh, maybe you, you're an inexperienced person, but God will put you right out there in front of a crowd of people and expect you to say or do whatever he's calling you to do. Amen. And when you do that and you feel that nervousness, the thing to do is what? Call on the Lord. Amen. Lord, I can't do it without you. I, I don't want to move without you, Lord. Yeah. And when I open my mouth, Lord, let it not be myself, but let it be you speaking. Let the people yeah. hear you. Don't let, them, don't let them hear me. Let them hear you, Lord. And when you trust God and lean on him, depend on him, knowing that the energy, the strength, and the courage is not coming from you, but the courage is the supernatural courage that God puts upon you, that you open your mouth and just begin to speak and do what God is telling you to do. The people in the Old Testament who were building the tabernacle and building the Ark of the Covenant and all of these items for the worship of the Lord, they had to have the Holy Ghost to operate with them. The Bible says that the spirit of wisdom came upon the people so that they would know what to do. They'd never seen an ark before. They'd never seen a, a, a brazen altar before. They'd never seen a tabernacle of this sort before. They had to take dictation from God himself. And God gave it to Moses of how it's supposed to be done. And I'm sure they must have drawn a diagram or something. But at the same time, they got out there and the people who knew how to make the perfumes and the oils and all of that, they just had it in them. And the Spirit of God gave them the wisdom to do it the way he wanted it done. Amen. And that's the same thing it is today. We are instruments in God's hand. See yourself as an instrument in God's hand. Don't let the fear fog your approach to the thing that you're supposed to go to. Is it a new business? Is it a new ministry? Are you about to get married? Are you about to go into a new place? Whatever this thing is that you are dreading, you know God told you to do it. You know it's for you. You know it's your blessing. And there are many people who have allowed fear to block their blessing because they hesitated. When people hesitate, and we see all, this is even in the Bible, where people were disobedient. You got to understand that the blessing is in the obedience. That's right. Amen. That's right. And when you are about to get into this thing, you have to realize that you are the one that holds the ability in you to take this opportunity. Opportunities have presented themselves to people. Are we going to take the opportunity and ignore the feeling of fear and trust God or are we going to miss our opportunity because of the little voices which are nothing but demons talking to you, telling you, you can't have it. This is going to be too much for you. This is too hard for you. You're going, it's going to kill you. 
You know, when you're hearing all of that, and it's beginning to block your trust in God. In other words, the, the devil is coming after your faith. He's, he's, he's trying to distort your mind and, and to distort your understanding of what God has already given to you. And when, the, when this distortion comes, there are some people who have actually missed their opportunity because they hesitated. They have missed some opportunities in their life and they can never go back and fix it. They can never go back and change it. You can't go back in time and do anything about it. All you can do is regret not being obedient. Because again, the blessing, the breakthrough is in the obedience. And so when you are obedient to God and you go and take what it is that God has given to you. Yeah, but this is in the way. There are giants out there. They're, they're bigger than me. This thing is harmful. This thing is, is, is hard. Yes, it is. But with God, all things are possible. Yes, amen. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Lord, I am more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Yes. All right now, I have to talk to myself and encourage myself in the Lord. Amen. It's going to be all right. Come on, turn to your neighbor and tell him it's going to be all right. Because you've got to see that God has brought this thing into your life. We're, we're wrapping this up right now, but I just want you to be encouraged today to understand that God is about to bring you into a place of blessing and prosperity. You can see that your prayers that you have prayed, God is trying to show you that, hey, I heard your prayer. I heard your prayer, and it's coming to you. This thing is about to come to pass. Whatever it is that you've been praying, all this time you've been praying about it. But see, the problem is, is you've been imagining that it's going to look one way, but it comes a different way. Yes. It comes uh, in a different kind of a package, and when you, when you are about to receive it, you're going, oh, 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 that ain't, that's, that's not it. I'm scared of that thing. No, no, don't be afraid. It's still what God said. Because Amen. see, when, when, when you pray to God, you really want the best that God has. Amen. And so when you say, God, have your way. Have your way, Lord, have your way. Well, God's ways are higher than our ways. Amen. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Yeah. He can see what we cannot see. And so when we're saying, Lord, have your way, well, when that thing starts to come into your life and the opportunity is now before you, and why do you get scared of it? You get scared of it because it just don't look like you thought it was going to look. Amen. It didn't come in the same package you thought it was going to come in. Amen. But nevertheless, it is actually better than what you thought it would be. Amen. It just don't look like it because the package don't look like much. I remember a time uh, in, at Christmas time when I was staying with my grandparents. I was a little boy. And I didn't have a lot of money to spend on people's Christmas gifts. So we would exchange uh, Christmas gifts in our house. In fact, we would draw names and see who would buy a gift for this person or that person. That way everybody would be, everybody in the house would get a gift. And so I bought not only the gift for the person whose name I drew, but I also got another gift and I wrapped it up and it would be, some people might call it a gag gift, but it was just a bonus. And it was this giant piece of peppermint. It was a giant peppermint stick. And I wrapped it up first in a, a paper bag, you know, that, that the material that you have for, you know, a, a paper bag or a sandwich bag, and I wrapped it up and I put rope around it. And then I got some newspaper and I wrapped it around there. And then I tied a string around that. And when I, after I wrapped it all up and got it all bundled up, you couldn't even tell what it was. And so I put a bow on the top of it and put it under the Christmas tree. Everybody had gotten their gifts and opened their gifts and then we had some kind of a game we were playing and it was my grandfather who won the game and he won the prize which was that bonus gift. So I went under the tree and I handed it to him and it was wrapped in newspaper. 
all the other gifts were nicely packaged and, you know, they had nice shiny wrapping on it and bows on them and ribbons on them and they looked beautiful and he got this thing with rope tied around it and newspaper and he's looking at it and he said, <laughs> I, 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 he just figured it was nothing. He had to take a knife and cut the, the rope off of it. Then he had to take the, you know, pull the tape off of the, off the newspaper. And then by the time he got inside of that, now he's got the same thing with this brown paper. He had to cut that open. He had to take the tape off. And he just kept on wrapping and unwrapping and unwrapping. And finally, he got to the big peppermint stick that was in there. My granddaddy had a look on his face like, this was the greatest thing ever happened to me. And, and he, he, began to, he began to say, this is so good. I love it. I said, wait a minute, it's just a peppermint stick. He said, it reminds me of my childhood. He said, when I was a little boy, all we got was peppermints and an orange. And he said, but we had the best Christmas because all year round, we would wait for our peppermint stick and an orange. And he said, my mind went all the way back to when I was a little boy, and that's all I would get for Christmas, and we were happy when we got a peppermint stick and an orange, Amen. or an apple, whatever the fruit might be. And so he's, he had a wonderful time because what he really wanted was something so simple, and he got a peppermint stick that reminded him of his childhood, and so much joy was on him. He said, this is the best Christmas I've had in a long time. I said, wow, I didn't get it because I said, a peppermint stick? Man, I got a bicycle, I got a basketball, and a basketball goal. I got this stuff. I'm like, and he got a peppermint stick, and he's happy, you know. But understand, I, I just threw that in there just to remind you, listen, the best is yet to come. Amen. When Moses was giving his farewell address, he was letting the people know, listen, you're about to go into the thing that God has promised you. It's better than what you can imagine. Heaven is better than what we can imagine. All that God has ahead of us is better than what we can imagine. All we need to do is to trust him as we go going into change. Different things are happening with us. Change is happening with us. Embrace the change. And don't worry about that feeling of fear because that's nothing but the devil trying to hinder you from getting what God has got for you. But the devil is a liar. God is the truth. And God says that he it is, is the one who is with us. Be not afraid. Everybody say, be not afraid. Be not afraid. God is with you. God is with you. Amen. Come on, stand to your feet and give him a praise offering. And if you're blessed today by this message, we hope that you will contact us by the information that you've seen on your screen. And come by and visit with us whenever you're in the Montgomery area. We're at 3851 Meadowview Street in Montgomery, Alabama. We'd love to have you to come and visit with us here at Miracle Deliverance Temple of Christ. We pray that you'll be blessed. We pray that you'll be prosperous and that God would do great things in your life as you submit your life to him. And don't forget, next time, join us again for another day of deliverance. Amen.